If civilization is any good, it has to help us forget our bodies, and then time passes happily without our knowing it, help us get rid of our bodies altogether. This is a quote from Lady Chatterley's Lover, a novel most known for its controversy, its explicitness, headlines that distract from the book's most interesting ideas. In Lady Chatterley's Lover, Lawrence isn't just calling for a more open relationship with sex, he's calling for a more sensory approach to the world. This view has left him labelled by some as a primitivist, yet there is a more complex image at play. Lawrence was a peculiar contradiction, as fellow author and good friend Aldous Huxley noted in an interview. Well, of course, I don't, uh, I never understood his anti-intellectualism, all the more so as he was an intellectual. This divide could well have begun with his parents, of which he wrote, My father hated books, hated the sight of anyone reading or writing. My mother hated the thought that any of her sons should be condemned to manual labour. Despite his mother's impression, it's obvious he fought against intellectual idealism. In a letter to Bertrand Russell, who he had plans to lecture with, Lawrence professed, My great religion is a belief in the blood, the flesh, as being wiser than the intellect. We can go wrong in our minds, but what our blood feels and believes and says is always true. Whilst it sounds like a simple rejection of knowledge and intellectualism, Lawrence's work seems to point to something more. He was afraid we were becoming disconnected from the world, ultimately disembodying ourselves. Again, in Chatterley's Lover, Lawrence puts it, The human race is dying. It is like a great uprooted tree with its roots in the air. We must plant ourselves again in the universe. As with the first quote, he is concerned that we are to forget our bodies and consider them merely as vessels for a mind. Lawrence puts nature at the fore, likening us to trees, just parts of the landscape, compelling us back to our roots. He perhaps sees that our technological striving and intellectual pursuits leave us stranded, abandoning our very origins, echoing his fears during World War I of mechanisation. Though his problem with intellect stems from disconnection from the everyday. In a somewhat tangential tirade in a review of Scarlet Letter, Lawrence criticised the American ideology, saying, The cultured, highly conscious person of today loathes any form of physical, menial work such as washing dishes or sweeping a floor. It's the simple things which Lawrence takes pleasure from even things which are hard work. Society is an immediate threat to these things, to itself, as Lawrence saw it. He later reconciled his views, saying, man can't live by instinct because he's got a mind. Emotions by themselves just become a nuisance. The mind by itself becomes just a sterile thing. So what's to be done? You've got to marry the pair of them. Lawrence's concerns don't seem so unfounded now, though perhaps not in the way he meant. We are stimulated at every moment intellectually, our lives are lived in phones and our thoughts are amplified around the world, our identity tied up with digital avatars. We often speak as if we have bodies rather than being bodies. We reside inside them, not as them. Lawrence's work encourages us to reconnect with the physical. Whilst we might know that we are bodies, that we must move and feel, if anything, civilization has done exactly as Lawrence wrote. It has sought to forget the body, to overcome it. As we look forward, it may be worth asking, what are we forgetting?